Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steven, welcome to yet another 5 Minute Friday, which has been quite a while since we have done that, but welcome to another 5 Minute Friday where we talk about my personal journey from JavaScript to Go, and I know a lot of you will relate, I know some of you have been waiting for this video, and today we're talking about how I moved from JavaScript to Go, so if you're not part of this community, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video or relate to this video during any time of this video make sure to hit that like button and I will appreciate that now before I made this video I wrote a very detailed article about how I switch from JavaScript to go so if you're more of a person who likes to read please make sure to check out that medium article right here so without too much further ado let's dive into this video and let me throw in five minutes on the clock <laughs> So like many of you, I was getting sick already of dynamic languages, specifically JavaScript, and I wanted something which is statically typed, I wanted something which looks mature, which feels mature, and you know, has all those features that people in the uh, statically typed languages talk about, so I was really actively looking for a language, but uh, there were just too many trade-offs at that time. So like many of you, I was looking for something clean, fast, stable, and safe, of course, because you know, if you're moving to a statically typed language, you want to look for all those things. And one of the things that attracted me very much in the language was the Go offers because those are people which are like giants in the software engineering community. So my first impressions about the language is the fact that the language is too ugly, it's too primitive and too simple. I believe a lot of you thought exactly the same way when you had a look at a snippet of Go code and you thought, what kind of a language this is and you know, this language is not for me, this language is probably for writing toy projects and not real world projects. Obviously I changed my mind after that and there are so many more things that Go offers on the table. With first impressions come expectations. So I was expecting that Go would have loads of frameworks just like JavaScript has. People in the community encourage and prefer libraries and small implementation of different kinds of concepts as opposed to uh, choosing a fully fledged framework which does everything for you. Coming from JavaScript, another thing that I was expecting that Go would have is a lot of features, a lot of clever ways to do things, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cool stuff which in JavaScript you have. Like in JavaScript you have lots of features, tons of ways to do the, exactly the same things and Go, quite contrary, didn't have those either because Go is a simple language and Go uh, doesn't encourage cleverness and magical code. Speaking of JavaScript, we are used to gotchas and magic, things which happen behind the scenes and for whatever reason they don't work as we think they work. Uh, I, I was expecting the same thing in Go, however Go is pretty stupid simple, it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty explicit and transparent as a language. So one of the first things that I loved about Go and it's kind of similar in JavaScript is the fact that you can easily prototype things, meaning you can bring your ideas to life very fast without, you know, uh, creating a bunch of classes just to say hello world. It can get ugly very fast, especially in the beginning, especially if you don't take any measures. Like JavaScript, Go can get very ugly. However, in comparison with JavaScript, Go sorts out a lot of ugly things, a lot of gotchas in the compilation phase. So when I say ugly, I really mean readability. So speaking of similarities, let's dive into a couple of examples to prove you that Go is really a little bit similar to JavaScript. Before that, I want you to download the resources that I prepared for this video. So let's open up a browser and make sure to type in github.com slash five minutes dash Friday. And yeah, you have a lot of things here. Make sure to download it because we will be using the exact same examples from this repository. So the first example that I want you to open inside this repo is the HTTP server example. And I want to show you how simple it is to actually write a production ready HTTP server. And this is exactly what I mean by easy to prototype, by easy to bring your ideas to life. So let's open up HTTP server main.go. And as you can see, this is pretty much shit. Like we're not using any third party libraries to create this HTTP server to serve on a specific port and all that stuff. It's as simple as this. And if you run this example, it's really going to allow you to serve like millions of requests and it's going to be a production ready server. So if you run this example, you'll see uh, the server is up and running. And yeah, let's open up a new terminal. And if you type in, for example, uh, I don't know, curl local host 8080, 
As you can see, it says status OK, which means the server is really serving that request. Another thing that I said Go is similar to JavaScript is the fact that it can get ugly. And in fact, I want to show you an example where things get out of hand very quickly. So let's open up another example called error handling. So inside the same repo, open up error handling, open up main.go. Let's just have a look at how error handling is done here. As you can see here, I'm trying to convert a string to number and it gives me back an error. I say, if error not nil, do something like log something, then return. Okay, let's say I have that number, then we move on. I try to marshal this JSON. As you can see, it again gives me back an error, which I have to do if I are not nil, because I don't want to avoid, I don't want to ignore errors and again I'm doing the same stupid check. Again, the right function is giving me back an error and yet again I have to say if error not nil, print this. So as you can see error handling gets very ugly, error handling gets out of hand very quickly unless you don't have like helpers like custom errors and all that stuff in place. So let's move on to differences and how exactly Go is different when it comes to JavaScript. So first things first, obviously Go is a statically typed language and JavaScript is a scripting language. And this is the difference because it sorts a lot of things, as I said, on the compilation phase. And you may be biased to think that because it's a compiled or statically typed language, it takes a lot of time to compile your program, just like in Java. Well, it's quite not true because it literally takes seconds and this is another plus of Go. Now, as opposed to JavaScript, JavaScript is used pretty much for everything. Like you can use it for front-end, back-end, mobile apps, desktop apps, you name it. Like you could hire JavaScript developers to do really anything for you. As opposed to uh, JavaScript, Go really uh, focuses only on backend or on systems. So you can't really say that you can do everything in Go like you do in JavaScript. Again, as opposed to JavaScript, Go is a very stable language without breaking changes. And from release to release, Go does not introduce breaking changes, or at least it tries to stay backwards compatible. And I can't really say the same thing about JavaScript, especially like try, you know, try leaving a project for like a month and then come back to the project and try upgrading libraries. You'll see a lot of things will break and you're gonna have a hard time, you know, maintaining all that project over time. And it's just frustrating and Go really shines when it comes to this thing. And simplicity is really in the roots of the language. Like everything you see, everything you write is really supposed to be simple, explicit, and you'll see simplicity over talked in Go because this is the thing that is being promoted. This is the thing that Go encourages. As I said before, as opposed to JavaScript, Go encourages libraries and concepts as opposed to fully fledged frameworks, things that are like all-in-one solutions, which do a lot of things for you under the umbrella of the framework. And another thing I love about Go really is its powerful tool chain and standard library. It has everything baked in. It has a build tool, a testing framework, a debugging tool, profiling tool, documentation tool, you name it. You just type in go help. It's going to give you so many more options that I've uh, uh, described here because as I said before, it's all in one thing. Like you could download the runtime and everything is there. And because Go claims it's a simple language, it doesn't even say in its an official docs that it's a concurrent language because they just think it's supposed to be there. That's what simplicity really is. And yeah, as opposed to JavaScript, Go is really a workhorse performance language. Like it's not the best top of the line performance. Like if you compare it to C or C++, but it's very close in performance. It makes use of the computer resources or the machine resources very efficiently and it has those little thing called go routines which basically are very memory efficient and are blazing fast and you could run millions of them so we've talked about the fact that go has a powerful standard library and by powerful standard library i mean really just import a package from the standard library and it's going to do a lot of things for you it's going to be production ready stuff so without too much talking let me show you what i mean by powerful standard library so i have an example here it's a simple example but it proves you how powerful the standard library is. So I have something called TCP memcache. So let's open up main.go. And yeah, as you can see here inside the main function, I am creating a simple cache struct. After that, I am creating a listener on TCP. I'm creating a TCP server. And then right here, just run everything concurrently by simply providing the keyword go and inside the listen function is where uh, all the magic happens. So if you go ahead and run this example, you'll see that this actually works and it's a very powerful thing just by using the standard library. So I'm running this example. As you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just waiting there. So let me open up a terminal and say tell uh, net and let's say localhost and 
providing the port. And as you can see, I just dialed into the TCP server. Let's say get X, nothing. Let's say set X is going to be 10. Okay, let's say get X again. It's saying 10. Let's open up another terminal window and let's tell net into it. Let's say get X. As you can see, it works. It freaking works by simply using the powerful standard library. Lastly, in the differences section, I talked about the workhorse performance of the Go programming language, the fact that it's a concurrent language by default and it's just crazy and mind blowing the amount of features that Go gives you. And one of them is concurrency, of course. So to show you a small example, make sure to open up the async example in the same repo, main that Go and inside main.go, as you can see, we have a very simple function called sum. And if you run this example, in fact, you're going to get uh, results in a random order. So as you can see, I get uh, results in random order, which means they execute in parallel, which means one of them may finish before the other, which means all you have to do in order to run asynchronous code, in order to run um, not only asynchronous code, but asynchronous code on multiple cores, on multiple threads, all you have to do is simply use the keyword go. It's just two freaking letters. That's all you have to do in order to make your code asynchronous. As you can see inside the repo, you have multiple other Go examples. Make sure to check them out, make sure to play with them, or make sure to simply check out the uh, Medium article which I wrote. There I have used all of these examples. Now I've talked a lot about differences and all that stuff, and obviously Go provides many more things. But overall, let's talk about some of the things that I love, some of the things that I always come back to, that I always fall in love with. And those are simplicity, robust and strictness and safety and stability. Another two perks that I've talked about is the fact that the language is productive and you don't really need Go experience in order to get hired. A lot of companies pick up Go, a lot of startups pick up Go. These are really the things that shine. These are really the things that make me come back to the language all the time. Now, obviously I'm not going to praise Go because Go has its downside. It has its own disadvantages. And the first thing that I don't like about the language, it sometimes feels too simple. Like you don't have, for example, generics yet. and you know, sometimes you have to write, you know, to reinvent wheels, do type assertions and all that stuff. Another thing that I talked about earlier is the fact that Go can get ugly. Yes, it can go ugly, especially for beginners, especially in the beginning. And yeah, Go doesn't really save you from messy and ugly code unless you don't take any measures, unless you don't use the system the way it was intended to be used. Another thing that sucks about Go, in my opinion, is the fact that it still has small adoption, which means it still has a very small market, meaning people are having a hard time getting hired. Now, depending on countries, cities and all that stuff, you may get a job when it comes to Go uh, easier or harder. At the time when I uh, was picking up Go, when I was learning about Go, there was only one single company that was hiring Go. They had the single position open, like the last position open and I was lucky to get the job. So now that I've told you so many things about Go, it's time to make the first steps because, well, you may consider switching to Go, right? First things first, make sure to complete a tour of Go, which is basically that tutorial which is going to walk you through the entire Go programming language and is going to really give you a clear image, a clear understanding of what Go is as a language, how you can use it. After that, I encourage you to go for a couple of courses and I also recommend reading a lot of articles and blog posts because Go is very rich when it comes to that thing. And finally, don't wait too long because your knowledge is not going to be fresh anymore. Try and get a job as soon as possible, either by applying as a contractor for another company in another country where Go is hot, or if Go is hot in your local market, make sure to apply for a position over there, but make sure to apply for a job. Otherwise, you know, Go is gonna come and go next to you. And I wanna wrap up this video with a couple of recommendations in order to keep you a good uh, Go developer, in order to make sure your transition again is as smooth as possible from JavaScript to Go. First things first, make sure to change your mindset because in Go, you don't do things like in other languages. A lot of the times you will focus rather on concepts, uh, you'll learn how things work under the hood rather than using a fully fledged framework. And lastly, remember that Go promotes simplicity, which means Go suffers no magical code, no uh, clever constructs, no uh, nicer and shorter ways of doing things. And yeah, Go is really all about simplicity. That's why I make sure to get used for that kind of experience, for writing longer versions of Go, for being really 
uh, uh, as explicit as possible, as simple as possible, because that's what the language promotes. All right, guys, I know it wasn't really a five minute Friday because it's never a five minute Friday because I always go beyond five minutes. But nevertheless, this was pretty much about my journey from JavaScript to Go. Hopefully this was useful for as many of you. And if you guys relate to what I just, you know, said and uh, the advices I've given in this video, make sure to like and share this video because that's going to mean a lot for me. It means you care, it means you relate. And also if you aren't part of this community, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also make sure to check out the description of this video guys, because there I linked the resources that I used in this uh, uh, specific tutorial. And without too much talking guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>